This episode is brought to you by John Blake Sales Breakthrough Solutions, helping you to at least double the amount of leads that you get that convert into paying clients. Welcome to the Master Dealmaker's Secrets Podcast. And now, here's sales growth strategist, John Blake. All right, so I have got Trevor Toe Cracker Crook with me this morning. Uh, we uh, have just been reminiscing about where we may have crossed paths previously, but I'm excited to have Trevor on this morning because I want to talk about offers. And uh, Trevor is a master copywriter. He's been at it for a long time. He's worked with dozens and dozens and dozens of companies and created massive shifts in their sales, millions of dollars worth of extra revenue. And so I knew that today would be a really good conversation. So good evening where you are, mate. <laughs> good morning where I am. Yeah. Welcome, John. Yeah. Welcome, John. Down under it's morning and it's evening here in Panama. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I've just been uh, making plans to move to Panama because apparently there's good waves there and it's a cheap place to live and I can't work out any, any other reason why I shouldn't go there. Well, oh, there's, there's, the there's a there is a taxation kids. reason as well, but you know, we, what was we that? won't go there. There is a taxation reason as well. Oh yeah, well that's well, that's good. that's kind of where I'm. You know, <laughs> when you live in <laughs> when you live in Australia, that's an absolute um, that's an absolute consideration. I do have a couple of kids that might have something to say about that, but you know, give me a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bring them along. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, I'm sure they'll have fun. Um, so, mate, you've uh, got a pretty interesting background, you know, uh, in commercial finance, work for banks. Um, at 36, make, made the leap, uh, made the leap uh, have, you know, studied with uh, Dan Kennedy with, that I've, you know, obviously also a big student of of Dan Kennedy and uh, and jumped into the world of of, of copywriting and, and business growth and strategy. Um, so you've got a stack of, of, of experience. So I had a, a couple of questions that I was just going to ask you just sort of to get rolling. Um, how'd you get the nickname? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to have that tattooed permanently on my forehead. <laughs> I've been asked that about 50 times in the last week, even that's on my profile. But it's a good question, especially with the people that see that the, the chrome tipped uh, toe cracker shoes and think it's from the shoes, but they yeah. occurred drunk one night in 2009 living in Vancouver. Yeah. So when I was sort of in my last year of being a commercial finance broker um, in 2000, I'd bought this box of marketing stuff from Mal Emery after responding to his uh, lead generation advert in the Sunday paper in Queensland where I was living, uh, offering a free report, which I now know is a glorified sales letter. Yep. <laughs> but I, uh, I always knew when I quit banking, like paid employment in 96, sort of, to become a broker that I wasn't going to do that for the rest of my life. And I always had an interest in marketing, but still didn't really have a clue what I wanted to do back then. And But I loved the information that I was reading in these marketing manuals and copywriting stuff from, you know, people we would know as the greats, the old dinosaur direct mail guys. And I ha I was courting this uh, eight-figure company and basically to refinance them, but their, their parent company was siphoning off the profits. So whilst they were an eight-figure gross company, they had no working capital. Um, they had a nine hundred thousand dollar hardcore overdraft with no. Literally, they couldn't spend a grand. Basically, wow. so basically, the average uh, debit balance was nine hundred k. And so I ripped them a few. Well, ripped them a new asshole verbally and told them a few home truths about their business and and uh, pointed out their juvenile ways of doing business. And I was actually a customer of theirs as well at the same time. And I said, look. Honestly, just I just can't get you financed the way the way you're situated right now. I said, but I'll tell you this: if you increase your prices ten percent overnight, ninety five percent of your customers will not leave you, myself included. And you know what you're doing now in terms of growth that'll solve your cash flow problems, basically. And it wasn't something that I came up with. I'd read about one of these manuals. Can't remember who, yeah. but you know, I knew when to apply it. And that was sort of it. And um, a year later, I just get in the copywriting world 
and I get this full page unsolicited testimonial letter from the managing director, basically <laughs> sort of stating what I just told you. And he and he said, well, and we solved our cash flow wishes. So I like, all right, I'm going to call you up on and want to know the actual details. And he said, yeah, we went from a nine hundred thousand dollar hardcore overdraft, the average cash in bank per day of three quarters of a million, so one point six five million turnaround, literally from that what seven second marketing tip that I didn't create. Wow. Like thanks to that was like thanks to your toe cracker ways we solved our cash flow issues and you know when I got into copywriting I wanted to create my own my own voice I didn't want to be you know I didn't want to be a John Carlton or a Gary Halbert or a Dan Kennedy I wanted I resonated with them I was took inspiration from them I admired them but I wanted to be me and so I thought you know what hey Trevor toe cracker crook I will. Uh, personally brand myself as that you know and that's what i did that's all it was yeah and then uh, eight years later living in vancouver staggering home drunk from a bar one night i saw these chrome tipped snakeskin shoes like really really pointed i mean if you took someone around the neck you'd decapitated sort of yeah and um anyway i i got the shoes and the rest is sort of it just helps with the branding but the name yeah. came from a client back in 2000 literally yeah classic yeah, you gotta love that yeah, that's it. Awesome. So, um, so financial leaks in most businesses. I mean, we've you, you've just brought one up. Um, not you know not charging enough or not increasing fees. Uh, and I and I love that. You know, I've just written that note down straight away. You know, ten percent increase in your fees. Ninety five percent of people will not leave. H how many times yeah. have you seen that repeated? Oh, oh well, well, I first told that in two thousand. It's now two thousand and twenty three. You know, and it's it still works because, yeah. look, and let, the only way it won't work, and it, I mean, is if you're given, you know, poor service, right, or providing poor products. Yep. Right. You know, and either way, without increasing your prices, you're going to go out the back door anyway, sooner or later. But if you're if you've got a good product or a good service, uh, and you bump it up ten percent, most people are going to go. You know what? Yep, that's okay. I'm going to still keep buying. Yeah, it doesn't mean you can't bump it more, but I mean, just you know, even a business turning over a million dollars, right? Gross, it's an extra hundred k. Now, let's say they only made you know forty grand on the bottom line. Where does that extra hundred k go? Yeah, straight to the bottom line. Straight to the bottom. It's cream. Yeah, yep. right. Your your operating expenses don't change. Your overheads don't change. That's just cream money. Yeah. So people can literally like listen to this and go, right, toe cracker. I'm going to put you to the challenge and. You know, I when I did uh, Shramko's first podcast a couple of years ago, yeah, I mean, literally had people implementing that and going, "Holy shit, this works!" You yeah. know, it's so, so it simple. Does. Yeah, it's and so that's what simple. I like. You know, you know, being able to just look at look at someone's business. Obviously, the the financial background, the interviewing, you know, thousands upon thousands. Literally, I estimate roughly about ten thousand business owners during my. 20 odd year banking career between banks and brokering and pulling apart about 35,000 sets of financials. Yep. You get to understand business a lot. Yeah. yeah. And one, one of the keys um, in my, my banking and my lending days as a manager was that you'd look at three sets of financials and any, any change income wise expenses wise, 10% or more had to be commented on. Yep. In other words, you had to investigate. Yep. Right. It didn't matter whether I was signing an off or not, because if I was signing an off and the credit police came around or the Gestapo, as we called them, they'd rip me a new one. Yep. Okay. Um, so, you know, what was interesting back then before I had a clue about marketing um, and I wasn't even armed and dangerous enough then to blow my, you know, my own left nostril off was that <laughs> consistently, you know, back in the old days, yellow page expenses would be reduced um, advertising and marketing costs would be reduced. And when I would ask the question as Mr. Bank Manager, I always got the same answer. Well, we tried that, didn't work. Yeah. Or now I know is you tried it because your copy sucked and your offer sucked or you tried just one-shot mail. That's why it didn't work. Yeah, yeah. But don't blame the system or the marketing tool. Blame your own lack of ability in that area or having the balls to invest in someone to do it for you. Yeah. So, you know, I've just sort of taken that. I mean, that experience has obviously helped me to get me to where I am today um, for for companies, whether it's a small company or a company doing seven, eight, nine figures. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. A couple of things that you brought up there. I mean, 
like in in this country at the moment, inflation's um, massive. So, you know, if you, if you add um, CPI to inflation, you know, you've got at least five percent, you know, per year already. So if you if you increase increase your prices by ten percent, it's like, you know, m- most people are going to go well. You know, everyone's got to because because the in the absence of doing that. If you if you haven't got a really good handle on your P and L, in eighteen months' time you're underwater, and, and and I've seen that happen with a lot of clients in the last eighteen months because we've had you know pretty big inflation in this country, and uh, it, yeah. it's like if you're not putting your prices up on a regular basis, um, that's what's that that's what's going to happen. It's like oh people might not pay it. In fact, I remember I used to be the agent for Mambo um, okay. for about ten years. And and I was the agent when we were selling a truckload of those loud shirts, you know, those obnoxious, um, you yeah. know, graphic rayon shirts. You know, at one point, we were selling about two million bucks just in WA. Um, wow! And and it was you know it was a it was a incredible ride. But I remember sitting in front of this guy, and you know, the loud shirts were like the you know they were the jewel in the crown. You know, so everyone that came in to to buy the range, that you know, that that was the thing that they were most that they were most um, interested in, and they increased the price by, uh, I think it was about three dollars fifty. <laughs> right, and I got this buyer sitting in front of me, and he and he was he wasn't really a surfer. He he sort of had a farm, you know, sold the farm, bought a surf shop. <laughs> <laughs> As you didn't do. really have much of a clue. <laughs> pretty, pretty green. You can kind of get a picture of the sort of sort of guy. And I'm standing yeah. there, and, and and he he looks at the prices. He looks up at me, and, he, and I'm, I'm like, "What?" And he goes, "You put the prices up of the loud shirts." And I went, "Yeah." And he said, "And I said, well, what's the problem?" And he said, "He goes, they might not sell." And I looked <laughs> at him, and I went, "They might not sell anyway." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's look, and it was the most incredible pattern interrupt. Like, and he just sort of went, Yeah, right. <laughs> and of course, it made absolutely no difference whatsoever. You know, like they yeah. sold out, we couldn't get any more. And, you know, all those people that ordered it wish that they'd actually ordered more. It brings up a, a good point because most people, you know, they've, you know, and I'm not a, I'm not a huge lover of the, the, the word or term mindset. And um, and I can't take credit for this, but I had a good one. I was doing a podcast a couple of years ago. I had a guest on, and he's like, "Mindset is banned in in my company." <laughs> right? He said, "Because why would you want to set your mind? Right? You want a mentality shift. The problem is most people's minds are set, and it's set in freaking quicksand. They can't get out of their own way, let alone get pulled out of the quicksand. And the amount of times over the years we were dealing with business owners, and it's like, yeah, same thing." Well, what if what if they won't, you know, pay? What if they do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like people going from doing free quotes, right? That most people in that sort of business to consumer market uh, will do a free quote. Well, I teach them actually charge for it. Yeah. Right. Why but not? position position it in a different way that it's not a free quote. And of course, sometimes you gotta toe crack them in the ass to get them to at least test the charging for it stuff. But when they do it, blows them away. And I was like, yeah. well, how does that feel? Oh, I wish I'd done it years ago. Yeah, yeah well, I can now jack the price up. And of course, they what they find out is that the person who's actually paid for that previous free quote is much more highly going to convert to their offer. Yeah. You know, and, and this came about from myself really in, uh, in 1999. I'd been broking since 96. And I mean, I was very good for my inside banking knowledge, being able to look at a, um, a business owner's loan statements, financials, assets and liability, and the security their current bank held and tell them how much their bank was ripping them off and tell them what they were worth in the marketplace. So I knew that once I did that, and people are fearful of their bank manager because in my day, we were called the God Squad, you know, because we played, we played God. We either mm-hmm. said yes to your loan. Yep business loan or no and we said the same for your personal loan same for your mortgage loan so i knew how to present stuff so and of course they'd always hire me 
Then I had a bit of a brainwave about three years too late. And I was like, well, why don't I start charging for this? So I literally went from doing it free, let's say the 1st of April as an example, I started charging $750 this week. Got a reasonable take up, right? Because most of my deals I'd broker were between three quarters of a million up to, you know, well, over 10 million. So that, that was $750 for a loan quote? Well, so seven fifty. What I would previously do a report for free. I would assess. I would assess how much the bank was ripping them off, right? And then two weeks later, so I started charging seven hundred and fifty, and then I put it up to fifteen hundred a week later. So within two weeks, I went from doing it for free, mm -hmm. like I'd done for three odd years, to seven hundred and fifty, then to fifteen hundred, and then two weeks later again. So a month after, I was charging three grand. Bear in mind, this is back in nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. I, when that was three grand, I got a much better acceptance rate, high conversion, three grand than what I was doing for free for three and a half years before. So, uh, so I'm then curious. They would, then they would pay my fees. So I'm, I'm curious, what sort of language did you use to position that? Yeah. Okay. Whereas in before, I'd say, well, you know, I mean, let me let me look at everything, and I'll come back to you, you know, with a bit of a report. Then I changed to a finance investigation report. Nice. I couldn't call it an audit because I wasn't an auditor, right? So finance investigation report, okay. Now, these were people I know from my banking days when, you know, a lot of a lot of clients, especially they're borrowing, you know, two, three, four, five, ten million dollars, would go to their their big accountant and the accountant would do some sort of proposal for them you know, provide the financials, list of assets and liabilities. And most of the time it wasn't worth the paper it was written on, let alone them being charged, you know, seven and a half, ten grand for that. Yeah. I would literally take out the financials. I used nothing in what they put together because they were clueless about how to put a, a loan together. So this is like, well, hang on, back in the day, I should be charging for this. And just that the change in the language. Right, and I've done that consistently for clients over the years in in many industries. Um, you know, like I have so many favorite stories on this, but a classic was a guy in Ireland um, quite a few years ago. Now I was in Ireland in Cork, meeting with him uh, in a restaurant, and he's in the heating and insulation business. Right, typical business owner, double page spread in the in the local paper, business name at the top least one third sometimes half of the ad taken up with a picture of his fleet because he thought bigger is better which isn't always the case right and he's still competing on price like everybody else yep so i said all right well from the moment you get inside that homeowner's door in other words they've responded to your advertising tell me exactly what you do leave nothing out so he's just rattling off like a parrot what he does yep and he said something, and I was like, well, stop. I was like, rewind. That bit you just said there. I want to dig into that. He parrots it again and keeps talking. I was like, mate, shut the F up. Like, seriously, stop. We're digging into this. And he's like, well, everyone knows that. And I was like, no, 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 no. Your competition does. Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, your potential client does not. This is the hook. This yep. is the angle. This is going to give you the run on the market. Yep. I said, so, and I said, okay, so when you're there, so what he said was in at least every home, there's, there's a minimum of nine areas where the heat escapes. So when the heat escapes, it does what? House is colder. Yep. Bills go up because you've got it. Yeah. Right. I said, all right, from now on, from this day forward, you're no longer offering free quotes. You're offering a heat leakage and uh, what do I call it? Heat leakage and ins uh, inspection report valued at 197 euros. And you change your quote form to look like an actual report. All those things that you check automatically have a little box for them. The ones that were escaped, cross for fail, tick for success, right? The report's designed for their home to fail. Yeah. And of course, what's the recommendation? You at your prices, no longer are you competing on price. No. Let your you competition do that. Yep. And you just own the market. And that's yep. the sort of thing that I do all the time for various industries. It doesn't matter whether you're a, a B2C, like a tradesman or someone going to someone's house to measure blinds, gardening. I mean, I've just uh, wrapped up a, a gardening sort of uh, mentoring business with a UK landscape partner. 
And that's one of the things, the first things I taught them, right, was to, well, instead of going out doing quotes, right, offer this free garden assessment report valued at 297 pounds and actually got the form designed. That's a massive like legal pad size form in triplicate. Same thing. Everything they look at is a score of zero to 10, right? It's designed, in other words, the slope of the land or the slope's bad, it's going to be a one, maybe a two. Accessibility might be hard, might be a three, might be a four. Something could be a zero. Recommendation, pay for a design fee, you know, and it just changed the market. So I got them doing that as neighborhood farming letters when they're on a, you know, on an actual job site, you know, drop yeah. out 20, letter one, letter two, letter three, old school direct mail. And one of the partners, their first, uh, I think, 85 letters pulled in 290 grand in gross fees. Wow. Not bad when each letter so cost four quid, four, quid to my, four quid to drop with them with a magazine that we did for them as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's the sort of stuff. That, that's what can make you very different from the marketplace. And just recently, I've um, one of my clients that I'm a, a quasi or acting CMO for, um, I was like, you need... Um, someone that knows email deliverability. So I was recommended by some through somebody else. And you know, the, the young guy's good, right? And I and I was like, well, you need to be no longer you're just gonna, hey, I can look at it for you for free. You're now offering an email deliverability assessment report. And those fees range between fifteen hundred to three grand based on a few factors. Yeah. Right now, if someone's preparing fifteen, or someone's paying fifteen hundred to three grand, getting a detailed report where it'll tell them what's wrong and how to fix it. Option one, option two is you can hire me. Option three, you can take the report and get somebody else. Yep. Right, because people think they have to do this free shit to win the business. Yep. No, you don't. No. All right. So that's that's what I love doing, you know, coming up with the offers like that and being able to look at how someone delivers their offer for their services and come up with a solution that makes it painless, simplified, and generally where they can charge a truckload more. As in, you know, and they're like and they're maybe, adding value. Maybe too, double. Right? Yeah. People can see the value. People are getting a right. getting a clearer understanding of exactly what's required and why. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, he's got one right now where I referred him to somebody and they were like, oh, we're used to free quotes. And I was like, this is how you respond to this one. Right. And um, because it's all sort of quite new. But, you know, I mean, he's the go to guy for somebody in Australia that you might know the name of. I won't, I won't say his name, but looks after a lot of big e com stores, right? To do millions of dollars. I mean, the guy I'm just talking about, he's the guy that, the e-com store guys, are, this is a guy that fixes email deliverability, you know, but he didn't know how to position himself, right? Yeah, well, now yeah. he does. Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. I mean, it can be so simple. I mean, when you have those sort of changes of somebody in their business, the ripple effect that has on their life, their loved ones and everybody else that that, that impacts is quite astounding. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've like there's a couple of things that you've that – you've, um that you brought up, you know, just the, 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 the assessments massive. I've actually got a couple of landscaping clients. So the, um, the garden assessment report, um, certainly made my ears prick up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I've actually, it's done it all and I own the copyright. So we yeah. can have a chat. <laughs> but here's what's interesting, right? That came about from a lawn care client that, yeah. um, um, that I met at a Ted Nicholas event, um, in Tampa in 2009. Um, late, yeah, no, sorry, early 2010. I, I, I went to Ted's event, uh, as his, as his guest and this guy's like, Hey, can I, can I buy you lunch? And I was like, all right, yeah, you can. Nice guy. Been lawn mowing since he was 12, right? Pimply face, scrawny kid hadn't stopped. And anyway, he, he hired me to write some flyers, two page flyers and some door hangers and stuff for him. And so I did that. And, um, a couple of years later, I interviewed him, and uh, he at that point he was sending out around a million pieces of direct mail a year. Wow! Why? Because it was working. It was it a works. license. Yeah. Money. It was like owning the casino. Yeah. He went from you know doing okay in Denver, Colorado, to the biggest in the entire state of Colorado, and in the top ten in the entire country. 
from me changing the offer, presenting him in a different way, and obviously, you know, the rest that goes with it. But I mean, yeah. you know, and so I, I just adopted that or adapted that for the landscaping industry. And of course, yep. guess what? It still works, you know, same as pest control, you know, mm -hmm. a pest control guy. The two page formula is about 85%. It just changed the variables and a termite client, uh, I just called it as a termite um, investigation report, put a value on it, charge for it. Um, for every letter mailed at the time when I did that, which was costing him 50 cents back then, mm -hmm. he was returning $18 per every letter dropped into a letterbox. Wow. Not a bad return on your money. Mate, that's awesome. So just for presenting, you know, instead of doing the old free quote, right? Done it for poor, poor maintenance guys as well. You know, I mean, it's, I love doing it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, eventually it'll be in a, it'll be in a software, but you know, it's just still it's still a bit old school, but it works. Especially today, it works even better. Yeah. A lot of people who listen to the podcast want to know what we do over at Master Dealmaker Secrets, and effectively, what we do is we work with sales professionals and business owners all over the world who are seeing massive increases in their top line sales revenue. So we help business owners and sales professionals to effectively focus on the three key drivers to growing sales revenue in your business. The first one is controlling the message that you send out into the marketplace so that potential clients see and hear and read what you do as an opportunity as opposed to your competitors. The second thing that we do is we help you to create a direct path to the 20% of your ideal clients that will deliver 80% of the revenue. So everyone knows the 80-20 rule. We help you to de develop a direct path to the 20% of the people that are gonna give you 80% of your sales revenue in your business. And the third thing that we, that we allow you to do, that we create a process for, is for you to be able to double the amount of leads that you get that convert into paying clients. So if this is of interest, we do have an application only process to become involved in, in this particular program. And to, to get to there, all you need to do is, is to go to www.johnblakescall.com. So it's J-O-H-N-B-L-A-K-E-S-C-A-L-L.com. And there's a couple of questions to answer there. And then what you'll do is, is get on a, a quick conversation with me and I can find out a little bit more about what you've got going on in your business and see potentially whether what you are doing would be a fit for what we could help you with. And at that point, I can extend an invitation if it's a fit and uh, you can make the choice to come on board or not. So uh, that, that's the opportunity. That would be the next step if you're looking at how you can take things to the next level. If you're enjoying what you're hearing on the podcast, if you're getting value from it, uh, I invite you to do that and uh, I will look forward to talking to you. The website is www.johnblakescall.com. Talk to you soon. It's funny because you, you know, it's like a new toy, you know. And and, and the, the, <laughs> I wrote I wrote a post about this the other day. So, ChatGBT came out on November the thirtieth, and by January, there were all these experts. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's right. like the uh, now, the gold 10, rush 10, days. 000. 10,000 hours, right? If you worked 24 hours a day is uh 1.3 years <laughs> to be an expert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. That's if you did it every day 24/7. It's yeah. 1.1 1.3 years. And uh and there were experts on this thing by January. So, but the thing that that, that cracks me up is that you know, I've had a cup because I, 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 you know, I write stuff for clients, you know, like I put together phone scripts and, you know, e and cold emails and all sorts of stuff like that. And what I've noticed lately is that there's been a couple of people that, you know, you'll, you'll write and I go, look, I know this works. I've used it. You know, it's tested. This is my best crack at how we should start. Right. And it's like, oh, well, you know, I just got chat GPT to do it and it, and it's good. And then I look at it and I go, <laughs> <laughs> good yeah. and my, my take on it is that chat gpt is like an enthusiastic rookie at best 
<laughs> you look at the yeah, stuff and, and you just go, I, I haven't even got it, to be fair. No, oh, I've just, I mean, I've probably looked at two or three things. And the other day, I got it because because one of the things that we've started doing is um, finding salespeople for for clients, and I received a uh, application for one of these roles that we're looking for, and I could tell that the cover letter was written um, by just you know it's like the, the, it's the same <laughs> it's the same thing that happens when you look at a girl that's got shit in her face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you got shit in your face, right? And it's like, yeah. you see the cover letter and you just go, that was written by chat GBT. <laughs> it's the exact same. Yeah, you know, it, it, it is. And that's a perfect, it's it's before, after. Yeah, you like. <laughs> it's the perfect AI, analogy, right? Real person, right? But yeah. yeah. But it's what here's what's interesting is and yeah the whole expert thing and I've I bitten my tongue. This is you're only the second person I've spoken about it. I did a podcast interview last well the other week, and I was like, well, I mean, she was asking me more about copywriters and stuff, and I was like, well, you know, if you're a quite newbie and you don't know how to sell yourself, yeah, I mean, you've got to innovate or you could you could be out of business. But I think it's a great research tool and to speed up the process. But at the end of the day. Just like a company never makes a decision. A company does not write a check. No. Right? It's humans that within yeah. that company make the decision. The same is with, you know, at the end of the day, AI doesn't make the decision. No. Right? No. Whoever you present it to is going to make a decision whether they accept it or not or to test it. But yeah, all the expert that came out reminded me of the, the gold rush days where, you know, everyone's selling the pans and the, the shovels to the to the gold miners, right, making their fortunes. But those same people are all on pretty much all on crypto and every other yeah. shiny object. Yeah. That's great. You know, it's not my market, not no. my audience. They're not people no. I want to be buying my stuff anyway. No. You know, so good luck to them, you know. Look, I, I think it has utility, as, as you've pointed out. Um, but in terms of replacing, you know, the the, the copywriting function, I think it, there's a there's a long way to go. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely, I think it could be a good research tool and cut a lot of the process down, but, you know, it's just like garbage in, garbage out. You know, ask the wrong thing, it's going to give you the wrong answer. But I said I didn't bother to get it. You know, I don't write copy for clients anyway. I take the projects on and give it to former mentees. And if they want to, like, they could do for research, but don't ever give me copy for a client that you've used AI no. on. AI on. You're dead in the water. No, exactly. You know? Exactly. So, um, so what do you what what's your take on because you know offer is massive right if you if you if yep. you change the offer you change the maths and and the that my what, one of my favorite offer formulas and, and obviously what a mutual mentor of ours you know uh, Travis uh, Sago you know he he talks about you know the offer being the old plan versus the new plan um, and and the new mm-hmm. plan needs to be something that they can't get you know from from anywhere else but the other formula that i've you know that i that i use is you know offer equals product um plus uh bonuses plus terms are there any mm-hmm. other sort of formulas that you use that you find work really well well obviously i'm quite new in the travis world and i'm loving it right it's oh it's yeah he's hard. He's it's amazing. hard adjustment after 20 odd years of doing what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, um, but I did a post today. I'm sure if you, you maybe you check it out later because it gave a lot of clarity for something I'm about to put out. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's very different, but I get it. At the same time, um, the old way of, well, you know, there's 24 modules and there's this and there's that. You know, people are, holy shit, it's going to take a long time. Yeah. You know, whereas we used to think, oh, the more we stack on and the the, the longer it is, you know, yeah. all that sort of stuff. And it's not the case, you know, no. and it's the proof is there. And so what was interesting about my question today was that, so, you know, I've always used a proposal to close clients. Mm. Stems back from my banking days, you know, so I. I was proving the loan. Uh, so in my last job, you know, I could in my last position, I could sign off a million myself secured or or ten percent unsecured. My boss and I, like I was the two IC in this uh, quasi bank, we could sign off um, 
And between him, myself, and the region manager, we could sign off five million between the three of us, or five hundred thousand unsecured, right? Yep. It was always proposal. So when I when I went into copywriting, I secured my first ever copywriting client at ten thousand Aussie dollars using a proposal. Yep. Right? I'd never written for anybody before, and he was actually the Aussie guy in the secret. Um, so I've always used proposals, and those first, you know, from two thousand and one. Till basically sometime in 2012, I used more of a generic proposal document and then I'd do a sort of a two or three page snapshot cover. Hey, nice to talk to you, John. This is what we discussed. This is what I'm going to do. Here's the fees. Read the generic offer document, which worked well for the first, you know, basically 11 years. Mm -hmm. And then I changed it sort of quite dramatically. And when I changed it, I mean, even prior to that, I would just, you know, I mean, I would get the fees I wanted it was, you know, I had no problem getting the bigger fees. But when I changed the format, I presented it in a different way. You know, I mean, I my proposals pretty much close around 90%, whether it's a copywriting project or a mentoring project at yep. the fees that I want to charge. Now, yep. you know, I've had people that, you know, if, if I know they're talking to four or five different copywriters, I go, you know what, I'm not interested. Yeah, but, you know, I know sometimes they're talking to somebody else. And I've quoted like, you know, one, one particular uh, weight loss client in Germany. I quoted them 38,000 euros up front on a proposal to do a, a VSL. And um, I got the job, you know, I didn't write it. I got one of my writers to do it. You know, the power of presenting and positioning yourself, because most people, let, I mean, let's let's talk sex. Most people's offer a position is missionary. Yeah. Very vanilla and wonder why they either don't convert the way they want to or they convert at very low prices. When you do the Kama Sutra, right, you convert much higher, right? The, you get much more. Or the more reverse support. cowgirl. <laughs> Yeah, you get much more satisfaction and more money in the bank, right? I love the sense of humor. The band is, but it's you exactly opened that true. door. I had to go in there. I know. Yeah, I'm speaking the door opening. You know, <laughs> but it's, it 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 just works. And then I, I didn't realize until around oh, must be yeah five years ago now that that proposal document that I was sending out to close my own deals was is actually a valuable document right to teach it to others so i started teaching done done with you charging a fee and you know watching all my copywriters that i mentored i mentored a truckload since about 2006 yep 85 percent of them would double their fees in the first three months from wow. from the implementation of it right then i've had consultants i had a consultant go from 15 percent conversion to to 60 percent in around three months or 400 percent increase and higher fees just for following a proven process wow right now that same guy's daily rate went from 1500 pounds it's now twenty thousand pounds wow right by presenting himself in a different way and so i'm in the process of you know teaching this and leveraging from it because i don't mentor anymore i don't do one-to-one -one stuff i don't even do group and i clearly don't want to mentor copywriters but i'll give them the tools to be able to charge more and here's what's interesting. You know, I started to get a bit of feedback from people. I didn't know the results. And one guy I taught it two years ago for free. He was in a bad spot and I knew him. And I was like, look, just, just implement it. Do me a favor and implement it. I did a post about two months ago. And he, and this is where I first heard his results. He's like, yeah, man, you might not, because I'd forgotten about it. He goes, mm. you might not remember. I was in a bad spot and you offered to, to teach me for free. He goes, it, it, it's like the best thing. It, it made, I hate closing which a lot of people hate closing regardless of the industry. Yep. He goes, you made it seamless, painless. And he goes, I went from average $5,000 per, per copywriting project, regardless of the, the scope, to between ten to 25000 depending on the scope, based on what you taught me. Yeah. Uh, someone else chimes up, oh, yeah, I implemented a fraction of that. And I went from, I normally would quote three and I got 13 and a half grand. Yeah. You know, um, and my mentoring clients, part of the mentoring uh, process was I had to review their proposals before they sent them off. If they didn't send them off and I found out, well, mentoring's done and dusted. Right? Then dems the rules. Because a lot of times, and this happens to people in business, they'll still err on the side of caution and not 
put a high enough fee in. What if they say no? Well, we've already discussed this. What if they say yes, sunshine? And every single time I would just change the figure at the stroke of a key and go, send that. Fee got accepted. Could be yep. next to a couple of grand, could be three grand. But the classic was a guy in Tassie <clears> who <throat> was quoting a guy in the US. So he's like, well, the, the US conversion is going to put this amount of money in my bank account. And he was going to quote the good old, you know, 7997, call it eight grand. I just changed it to 13. Send it off. Said, now send it. It was accepted like almost immediately, which means I probably could have pushed the envelope a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it was a little bit underbaked. Yeah. Yeah, but he was going to quite, he was going to happily would have accepted eight grand. And in hindsight, I could have pushed it for, you know, probably at 15. least 17, 15 minimum, maybe yeah. 17. Then might have booked, but 15 they would have taken. Yep. Right. But this happens all the time. People are nervous to go, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. What if they say no? What if they say yes? When I send my proposals off, I just go, here it is. Everything's in here so you can make an informed decision, including the fees, either way. Yep. I'm good either way. Yeah. Right. Give them three days and roll them into a three step email sequence, modeled up three step direct mail sequence. That's it. Yeah. Right. But it can be a game changer. I mean, you go from, let's say, let's say someone, I don't care what your business is doing, eight quotes a month, right? And you're closing at, you know, whatever your close rate is. Imagine that same close rate, no increase in leads, same number of leads, yet you're doubling your your fees. What will that do to a business owner? Yeah, even if you don't get the same conversion rate, you'll you'll still do better. Yeah, <laughs> everyone does, but yeah, yeah. even to go, oh, okay, don't let's say you don't increase it. Yeah, uh, and the classic was a, a, another guy that I was uh, was actually mentoring and. Um, on two separate things. And sometimes we'd mentor on the business that him and his wife had, and he's in that, you know, business to consumer stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, we're getting the leads, but not, our conversions are, are low. I don't know what to do. And I was like, well, just do this. You did it for your other business. And he's like, Oh, dude, I hadn't thought of that. Just hadn't, this, he'd blanked on it. Right. Did his own version of it. Uh, he was happy to report three months later, a 260% increase in conversions without wow. Any increase in leads, no, no additional ad spend, no nothing, doing nothing different except presenting the offer in a completely different way, so the prospect could make an informed decision either way. Yeah, perfect. What what I find is that well, you know one of those massive um, financial leaks is that you know people put proposals together, but they don't actually present them. Yeah. I, I've found like there's I, I've worked out at least 10 strategic advantages to actually making a time with the person and going through the actual offer with them, either on Zoom or face to face or at the very worst on the phone to give them the heads up on it. Like there's yeah. that like that can increase your conversions. Like just doing that, just doing that one thing rather than you flick it through, might go to junk. First thing they're going to do, they open it, click, click, click through to the bottom line, look at the number. Yep. So presenting yep. is massive and hardly anyone does it. I, I, presenting will close about... more via Zoom um, for the landscape gardeners. Uh, I mean, landscape gardeners, we had, we had some pool builders in there as well. You know, they went from, you know, doing okay, but they're quoting 150, like a minimum pool in the UK is 150,000 pounds. Yeah, it would be. Right. They're closing. There's this, these pool guys when they visit the brothers, they were closing pools at that, you know, one fifty to two three hundred yep. using this same format. Yeah, right. So it's um, yeah, I'm excited to get it into more people's hands. But yeah, you're right. The way you present it, most people just go here. It is like when I when I when I send mine off, I say just acknowledge that that you've got it and there is an expiration date. And if it's through Facebook, I'll tell them there as well. And then I follow it up. But I give them three days. That's it. Yeah. Right. Because then I can go into the follow up email and the follow up email. And, um, but most people don't do that. And a, a classic was um, a woman that I was, took on a few copywriting proteges years ago, not, not at full fees, um, lower fees, but then they had to write for my clients for free, you know? Yep. And so I could leverage the difference there. And so I had this one woman who came right, right out of corporate world and she just hated the way mine was done. And um, 
so she wouldn't she wouldn't use it until she hit a roadblock and couldn't get into that 10 plus k figure mark mm -hmm. got rejected a couple of times and she was you know bent out of shape so we jump on a call i was in uh, poland at the time living and She's like, yeah, you know, I was batting about a thousand, blah 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 blah. And I said, well, you're batting a thousand because you're mostly closing people on a on the on the call anyway, and giving them basically a, a clinical corporate quote to to wrap up what you almost close them on on the call. Mm. And it's not going to work when you get into those bigger fees. No. Nah. And her face was just went. I'm not using your stuff. Blah 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 blah. This is the short version. Yeah, because it was a little <laughs> bit heated. <laughs> and I said, like, you know what? Just humor me. Give it a crack, you know? And so she agreed to do that. Mm -hmm. And a few hours later, I get this email through saying, hey, I want to go back to these two tomorrow that said no. One was for 10K, one was at 12. I uh, don't have time to do the full version, obviously, but what do you think of this? And I go, much better than that crap you sent through. She closed both. Yeah. Right. Right. From a, from a snapshot part of the of the formula. And um, unbeknownst to me, about you know, a week or two later, she emails her entire list, basically about the story we would had on this mentoring call. Mm. And the way she words it, it might, might be a little bit off. She goes, and when he, when he told me to use his system, my face recalled as though he'd farted violently in my face after eating a <laughs> plate full of Brussels sprouts. Sprout. This is her email to her entire list. And she's like, boom, boom, boom. But, you know, she's like, it works. It's proprietary yeah. to him. Right. And I go, that's probably the best testimonial ever because she was like completely against it. And you get the yeah. visual. It's like, yeah, it would be pretty bad. But it, it was so offensive to her to even try it. Yeah. But she did. And she's like, well, yep. Okay. It works. Yep. You know, and that happens a lot with people in business. I'm sure you've seen it. They're so stuck in their ways of presenting yeah. whatever or their, their system of doing something that doesn't work yet. They just won't change. They're fearful. It's like the people that need a, they know they need an assistant, a virtual assistant, a marketing assistant. They won't do it. Right. Yet they'll keep struggling, juggling all the plates until eventually you've smacked them around the head enough. <laughs> right. That they either die from a brain bleed or they, they do it, you know, yep. and verbally, I mean. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. they do it. It's like, Why didn't I do it sooner? Yeah. Well, yeah, because you weren't ready to change. You, nah. you weren't ready to stop suffering. You were choosing to suffer in your business. Yeah, finally chose to stop suffering, and this is what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's classic. I, I, I have had a couple of people that have gone. Oh, yeah, I've, you know, you know, I sent these two proposals out. You know, like, oh, how long ago? Oh, you know, two months, three months ago. Okay, what was the last conversation you had with them? Was this? I go, okay, do this. Then, like, within a couple of days, yeah, both of them said yes. Um, and, and then the other story that you mentioned, you know, where. Um, I had the exact identical thing where this guy, he'd been ripped off by his previous business partners and he was, you know, and I went and caught up with him for a coffee because he was just in a really bad place. And he said he wanted to get into consulting and I just gave him, you know, verbally, didn't write anything down. I just explained it to him, you know, the, 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 the process for bringing on consulting clients. And then, you know, just like you, didn't think much about it, totally forgot about it. Next time I bump into this guy, you know, Oh, g'day, g'day, Jack. How you going? He's like, oh yeah, g'day, mate. I go, yeah. He goes, y you know that thing you taught me? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, I have made so much money out of that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, like, oh, my gift must be in the <laughs> mail, is that? it? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> my gift must still be in the mail, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, revision is just plastic. Yeah. I mean, that's the old, you know, you know, you know what to apply. And when to apply it? Yeah, you know, I um, I met this woman at an event in uh, Phoenix back in 2012, I guess, and um, met a few women at that event, but um, <laughs> one became a golfer, and that's a different story. But this woman was a business coach, yeah, and um, so she's like, "Hey, can I, you know, come and spend a bit of time with you?" Back then, I'd, I'd talk to someone for free, you mm -hmm. know, I don't do it now, and. So she came in to where I was located at my mate's office and she was charging 350 an hour back then mm -hmm. and she wanted to get to 500. So I probed her like a proctologist without lube <laughs> and uh, made a few notes, right? And 
when I was finished, I just kept like straight face and I said, you know what, Michelle, there's no way in this earth you're worth $500 an hour and just shut up. And her face was like, she started, to, she started to tear up. I said, because you're worth at least 750 an hour, 10 hours paid up front, and this is how you're going to do it, All right? So the tears turn into happiness uh, very quickly. She implemented what I said. She's like, she immediately was getting 750 an hour, 10 hours paid in advance. But how interesting is it that intuitively – you probably picked up that she needed that pattern interrupt. Otherwise she probably wouldn't have accepted it. Oh yeah. Yeah. She needed to face some reality. Yeah. Right. And, and you know, I had my own reality back in 2009. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with Dov Barron. Who? Um, a guy called Dov Barron. He, he does a lot of quantum physics stuff. And I was living in Vancouver in Canada and I was speaking at his event with a few other people. Not, not a lot, not a whole cast of speakers. We all had like three hour speaking slots yeah. And so one of the guys we caught up for for beers and, and lunch about a week later, and he just picked up a contract with at the like not long before the event with Trump University for about 360 grand or something as a consultant. So I mean he knew his stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so we eat lunch and we're having a beer afterwards, and he's like, he goes, Man, I loved your presentation. He said, But you lost credibility with me. And I was like, do tell, give it to me. And he said, well, I'm guessing everything you said about the the, the case studies and the, the proof and the outrageous offers was all true. And I was like, 100%. And he said, where you lost credibility with me was when you said your hourly fee was 750 an hour. And he goes, corporates or the, top, the Fortune 500 companies would pay you five grand an hour for that information, for your knowledge. Yeah. And uh, so we spoke about it. I said, well, I'm, that's not my market, but I'll, I'll put it to 2000 now, like from, from tomorrow. And have a guess what happened when I went to two grand an hour? Yes. More often and less pain in the ass clients at 750 now. Now, a lot of people would like to get 750 an hour, but it was a game changer. Yeah. Sometimes it takes someone else to see what you can't see. Yeah. And that's exactly what he did for me. Right, but I was like, I owned it. I was like, all right, I hadn't thought of. I did. I I was pretty happy at seven fifty an hour. Yeah, but I was much happier at two grand an hour. Yeah, interesting. You know? And and getting you know mentoring. I mean, I would charge you know over three months period a, a chunk at a time, three payments. But yeah, you know, it was a game changer. Same yeah, as what yeah. I've done for clients because a lot of the times we can't see the woods for the trees ourselves. We need someone That's else so with more experience to be able to go. You know what? Just tweak this, change that, whatever. Um and go from there yeah so mate i'm uh, i'm mindful of the time but you, mate you've shared a whole stack of gold i'm stoked I, I'm, I'm sure that everyone that listens will get a heap out of what we've talked about um how do people get in contact with you if they want to continue the conversation or hire you to help them or what yeah i mean i've got a just a straight website called smofo.com s-m-o-f-o.com mm -hmm. it just lists a lot of my proof and there's a there's a really good report uh the million dollar lobster report yep. which is how two brothers literally took the book of the month club and did lobster of the month club at three thousand dollars a pop nice you know set us selling lobsters for 10 bucks each obviously i'm on facebook um yep. trevor Tokaraka crook and yep. i have a, a small group um beers bourbon and business it's not a massive group and that's the way I like it, but you know, share some gold in there. That's, cool. that's really it, you know? Awesome. I appreciate you having me on. It's been, it's been a blast and yeah, um, mate, thanks. Some, thanks for some coming good on banter as well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a bit of humor. And um, mate, you've got me interested in Panama after swing past. <laughs> well, I got, a, I've got a guest bedroom with, with its own ensuite. So you know, <laughs> I'm on the 34th floor here. We had a bit of an earthquake today, so it was a little bit, uh, I was like, "Whoa, this, this building's wobbling seriously." Although I, I'd hate to be on the 66th floor. Yeah, but still, yeah, I've got the wobbles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hopefully there won't be too many more of them. <laughs> nah, it's, all, uh, it's it's a it's a surreal feeling. Although I had plenty of those living in Costa Rica, so you get used yeah, to it. I bet. I bet. Awesome. All right, mate. Well, uh, thanks so much for being on, and um, mate, we'll have to get you back on again soon because I'm sure that there's more that we could chat about. Most definitely. Yep. Thanks, John. No worries. 
You've been listening to Master Dealmaker Secrets with John Blake. Subscribe to get more in-depth strategies and maximize your sales process with new episodes every other week. And double your inquiry to sale conversion with the lead flow you already have. Go to johnblakeaudio.com for his exclusive, free, no-fluff audio training and companion PDF guide.